Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and today I wanna to show you how to install a ceiling light when there is no junction box, no light, no fan there to begin with. In this scenario, we have a bedroom that does have a light switch, like the one behind me, but that actually switches the outlets. A way to test that is with a simple outlet tester. And if you guys don't have this, I do recommend getting a voltage tester, an outlet tester like this, and a multimeter if you're gonna do any electrical work because that's gonna keep you safe. So what you're gonna do is plug this into the top outlet. The lights show you that it's getting no power and then flip the switch. You should see the tester indicate that there's now power at that outlet with no faults. So what I wanna do is leverage the wiring with that switch, rewire the outlet so they're always powered on and then use the switch and a new Romex wire coming up to the ceiling to install that light and control the light so we have nice ceiling lights, brighten up the room, and now the outlets are still in place but they're powered all the time. So let's jump into it and start working through this install. Okay, so let's recap what you just saw in terms of laying everything out. Now, obviously you guys don't need to use painter's tape and really diagram everything out, but just wanted to show you what, what I'm dealing with. Remember, I have no access from the bottom. I'm on a slab, a concrete slab. I have no access on the top. There's no attic. This is a condo, so I, I can't go in the other unit and access through the floor or anything. So I need to come from this outlet up through the wall with the Romex cable and then I need to place the light fixture in the center of the room. So I just measured putting painter's tape in the center of the room. So right in the middle point is X marks the spot where I would want to put the junction box to hold the light. Then by using the magnetic stud finder, there's a couple different versions of this out there. Look down in the description, you'll see a link to all the tools used here, including this magnetic stud finder. So that's how I found the floor joist, and I wanted to make sure I'm in a cavity, and then also that my junction box, when I cut out that drywall, that I'm gonna be able to insert it, and I'm not hitting any floor joist. So that looks good there. So I'll run the Romex cable, and I'll fish it through this cavity between these two floor joists, and then I'm gonna to need to cut out some drywall, most likely halfway down the stud here, all the way over to the corner. And then I'm going to fish down through past this. I'm going to drill through this stud and then bring the Romex down to this junction box. I only need to get the Romex to the top of that junction box because the switch wires are running down there. So I'll be able to, one, rewire all these outlets, and I'll show you how to do that, so they're always powered on and they don't have that switchable outlet feature. And then two, to use the wires coming up to the switch and how to then control the power going to this Romex, which will then turn the ceiling light on or off. So now, let's cut a few holes.
So I think I got it with two holes cut. Obviously, I need the hole to install the box for the light to sit on. Now this box is simply for a LED light that's very light. It can't hold much weight and definitely shouldn't be holding anything like a fan. So I'm just gonna insert that box. And what I'll be able to do is run my Romex wire. And I have actually a drop, a small drop on the other side of this wall for a laundry closet. So I'm able to run the Romex on the outside of this load bearing wall and then come back through where we have the painter's tape, this cavity going down. And then I have a vent on the bottom here, which gives me access to the metal junction box. So I can pop out one of those sides. I can put a strain relief on there and then run that Romex right in. That gives me access. And then that gives me a full route of Romex all the way up to my light and that should be good enough to get everything wired up. So remember, I, I still want to rewire all my outlets, but first what I'm going to do is wire up the light so I can prove out that everything works as expected. And then once it does, I'll button everything back up, I'll rewire the outlets, install new outlets, and then we'll call it done. All right, so I'm using a fishing tape here, and if you don't have one, again, you can look down in the description and see the link for what I'm using. And I'm going to fish that through and grab it so I can tape on my 12-2 Romex onto the end of that. Now I'm using painter's tape. That's probably about the worst kind of tape you could use. Uh, you definitely prefer electrical tape or duct tape so it doesn't come off while you're pulling the wire, especially if you get into a tight spot where it's hitting something. So just take your time. Uh, it, if you had two people, this helps quite a bit, but you can do it as one person. And so now we got the Romex through the light junction box hole. And now we'll go and fish that through around that stud because I want to go down that cavity on the right hand side. And sorry, in the frame here, you can't see I'm fishing it through that bottom vent. So I'm taking the fishing line up. Now I'm taping the Romex onto it. and I'll pull it down through the wall cavity. Now I have plenty of extra wire on both ends. You can see by the wires. So now we're ready to start wiring up the junction box and also the light. All right, so we have the light in. We are fully wired where we have the Romex coming into this outlet down here. And now I also have all the other outlets, at least wires, removed. So I wanna spend a little time and show you guys what we got going on and how we're gonna leverage this switch, which you can see it has a yellow and black. So the black hot wires coming up to the switch and it is returning a yellow wire, which is also hot. So that yellow wire is coming down here and it's going to this junction box. Then it branches off. One thing to note is the wiring on this condo is through conduit, so it's all single strand wires. So it's more of like a commercial installation opposed to residential. So I no longer need this yellow because I'm using the yellow that's coming down from the switch and I'm going to connect that to the hot side. This is the Romex that I installed, the hot side that's gonna power the light. And then I'm going to tie in the, the ground and also the neutral. So I need to take out 
these switchable hotlines that came in here. And one thing you can notice and why I'll also be switching out all the outlets is if you compare a new outlet, you'll see on the bronze or gold terminals, which is the hot side, there is a small tab here. That tab needs to be broken off if you have a switchable circuit, and then that's going to isolate the top and bottom outlet so you could have one always on and then one switched. We are reconfiguring that. So we're going to have hot coming in, keeping that tab, and this is just going to be always on. Each of the outlets will be always on, and we'll have no switchable capability at our outlets because we're using the switch now to power our light. So that's what we're gonna be doing. One thing I'm gonna do is clean up these wires here. And a lot of these yellows, I'm gonna be able to remove. And because they're all in conduit, I can actually pull those. I can pull them through the conduit and take them out. So we don't have confusion later on if somebody's rewiring uh, to why all these extra wires are in the junction boxes. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so now I have an outlet that was getting fed a hot wire, which is yellow, from the other outlet box, and then I, it branches off to one more outlet. So either one of these I need to remove from, from the wiring. So I can actually just pull these, and because I have conduit in the wall, I'm able just to remove that. Now this one went over to the other outlet, and that is why you did not see a yellow wire get pulled from that outlet. So if I pull this other one, you'll, you'll see over at that original outlet, that wire is gonna come out. Now what this also does is it starts to simplify which yellow wire I'm dealing with. Now if you have any questions on which wire ends here and goes over there, you can do a, what's called a continuity check. So I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner which will dive in on how to use a multimeter for one of those continuity checks. Okay, so once I pulled all the excess switchable hots out, which I no longer need, all those outlets are gonna be powered always on. Now I only have the one yellow, which is coming from my switch, that I need to connect up with the hot side of the light. So I'm gonna wire all that up and then test out the circuit to make sure everything's working. So we rewired the outlet so the switch no longer controls the top outlet on each of the switchable outlets. Now the outlets are supposed to be fully powered all the time, which we'll test that, and the switch should control the light. Now I really didn't dive too much into rewiring the other outlets, but if you want more information on that, just look at this link right here and that will give you the basics on rewiring an outlet. So let's test everything out and see if it works. First up, I have the light switch in the off position, and I am going to use my outlet tester. Remember this outlet tester has three lights. You're looking for the two amber lights that will indicate that the outlet is powered and everything's good. So I'll test the top one, which was a switchable outlet before. Okay, so we got two amber lights, which is good. That's indicating power and everything's good. And we'll test the bottom one as well. All right, so our outlets are 
are good. I'll do that same thing for all the outlets in the room. And now the moment of truth, will the switch control the light? And it does. So this is one of the best upgrades I think you can do if you have a bedroom without any ceiling lights, but you have switchable outlets. So you can hopefully easily rewire that, put in a ceiling light, and now you have much more light in the room and just a more modern look. And if you're looking to sell a property, as I will with this condo, it's just what homeowners are expecting. So if you have a different situation, if you have some questions, jump into the comments. I'll happily give you my two cents. Again, I'm not a uh, licensed electrician, so I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm not giving you advice on the code, electrical code in your area. But hopefully you'll have more access than I did, maybe an attic or maybe a basement, so you might not have to do any drywall work like I do uh, coming up to patch that wall. And before you take off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have weekly videos to help you with improvements and repairs around the house, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.